Kia ora koutou, I'm Jan Logie. I'm the Development Manager with the New Zealand Centre for Sustainable Cities. Our presentation is a slice of progress that's happening in New Zealand around renewable energy. So it's just one tiny part of the picture, but I guess today is at least in part about putting all those tiny bits together to see the big movement that's happening. So, yeah. Um, this, we're specifically going to be talking about some of the research, what's happening at a local government level, and a project that's happening globally called REN21, which um, is collecting together city-level initiatives from around the world in relation to renewable energies. Um, so, the New Zealand, just to give you a bit of information about the centre to begin with, the Centre is a research group that's based at the University of Otago but involves all of the universities except Lincoln at the moment, though there has been interest from there, as well as Niwa, Landcare and Brands. And the idea of the Centre is to have strong multidisciplinary research to provide a solid research base for councils to make sustainable choices in the development of their cities. So it's quite an important area of work and Susan is part of the group as is Amanda Yates, who I can see just over there, yeah. So um, this project today that we're going to be talking about is um, REN21, which stands for the Renewable Energy Policy Network for the 21st Century and it's a global policy network in which ideas are shared and action is encouraged and I guess it's about collecting the data about what's happening and putting it out there so that people in communities can go to their councils and say, hey, did you know this council's doing this? Have you thought about that? Or so that councils can start to get a little competitive with each other so that they can try and be the best and the most progressive in terms of renewable energy. And we think that's a good direction to be going. Um, and they produce an annual report that puts together that data. Um, and the lead author of it is Eric Martineau, who comes out to New Zealand and teaches at Victoria every year and does seminars for the Centre for Sustainable Cities as well. That um, in last or this year we had them in Auckland, Wellington and were down in Christchurch as well. So um, we're working with him in the collecting the data for New Zealand and the next stage of that is about um, looking at what the drivers for change are. And now I'm going to hand over to Nick to talk about the detail. Right. Um, uh, what, what we're actually working on is the, the global status report on uh, local renewable energy policies. Um, so uh, what we did is that we uh, we went around and we talked to some New Zealand councils, and um, I'll try to whip through some of the things they told us about, because it's just basically a list. Um, we've got CO2 targets for the Wellington City Council, both for itself and uh, for the community. Um, they they were very involved in Project Westwind, which I mean anyone in the room here would know about. It's a, a big wind farm, uh, and uh, they were involved... Uh, encouraging it via the district plan, facilitating community consultation because it was quite uh, controversial and um, it was also quite a big hassle to get the wind turbines up there and they were very much involved with the traffic plan development. Um, they, they do a rebate of $300 uh, for successful applications for building consent for uh, residential solar hot water heaters and uh, similar technologies, um, which is quite a common theme. Uh, Christchurch City Council, uh, they also have their own targets, a 70% reduction in council emissions by 2011. Um, don't actually know how they're going on that, but that is their target. And um, they want to be carbon neutral beyond uh, 2015, and um, they also want a 20% reduction in community CO2 emissions by 2020. Um, quite an interesting project they've got going is that they use their landfill gas to heat a big swimming pool and um, a number of other buildings, it's uh, quite successful. And um, they also, because they have kind of air pollution issues and a variety of things going on there, they um, 
they fund an energy advice hotline. Uh, they have the Clean Heat Program, which is about replacing sort of inefficient uh, wood burners with, you know, either heat pumps or more efficient burners. And um, they also have an energy efficiency show home. I, mean, I should say that some of these are mainly regional council, but they, the local government is also involved in, in funding and uh, promoting. Uh, Waitakere City Council, which obviously doesn't exist anymore, but <laughs> they they were the Eco Council of New Zealand, and they have their targets. Um, they also did the uh, the building consent fee thing, and uh, five hundred dollars in this case. And um, they had a lot of little projects, uh, which um, I just have to read off. Cause I can't remember them all. Um, yep, uh, solar walkway lights, uh, ground-based solar lights. Um, solar hot water systems, um, photovoltaic systems. A lot of these things were kind of like uh, pioneering the technology, seeing whether it was worth kind of expanding with it. And um, they also uh, uh, funded a school to convert from gas to a wood fuel boiler. All right, so anyway, that, that was kind of last year that we, we rang around and tracked down some of that information. But the problem is it is not that useful to just have lists of what different councils are doing because you don't know how it came about, why it's happening, and from the perspective of a city that's not doing it, uh, they don't they don't really know how, how can we get to that point. So um, we've been talking to Eric about whether or not we could uh, expand uh, the work that we're doing with them and actually start trying to dig into why these projects are happening. And um, kind of come up with the uh, the phrase uh, enabling factors or you know disabling factors, things that make things happen and um, we, yeah, we're hoping that it will help other councils and people who want to make change uh, understand how things do happen because um, it's, it's usually quite complicated. <laughs> right, so we, um, we set up our uh, survey and um, Basically, the idea was that for any project that we've, we've got information about councils doing, that we would actually uh, try to work out why. Um, and we had a list of, of different possible factors based on other research that we've done. Um, you know, you often find that there's uh, champions within the council that, uh, you know, have really pushed it. And particularly somewhere like Waitakere uh, City Council, the mayor was, was really interested in these uh, issues. In that case, the uh, created environment there was pretty positive. Um, you've got uh, policy documents, uh, central government influence. Um, had some nice anecdotes from uh, Christchurch City Council about uh, the, the Labour Party in 2007 visiting the city and uh, kind of really giving a big boost for kind of uh, eco-type matters because at that time the government was very interested in those things and, uh, and it was reflected in changes at the local government level. Um, yeah, legal requirements, obviously, uh, under the Resource Management Act or whatever else. Um, uh, stakeholder involvement, that's pretty standard, uh, and resource availability. In Wellington, we've got wind, you know, hydro elsewhere in the country. Um, that's obviously going to be a big factor in what you can and can't do. Um, also really interested in the disabling factors, the things that had to be overcome. We thought that would be helpful information to try to capture, you know, opposition from businesses to cycle lanes, for example, I mean, you never know what it might be. Um, and the other thing that is quite interesting is that um, a lot of councils do a lot of, you know, positive things, be it to do with renewable energy or any kind of change, but they don't measure the outcomes very well. They don't have resources uh, put aside to uh, to capture the results. And um, there's quite a lot of uncertainty about what does and doesn't work. And, you know, we interested in finding out who is who is recording this information and how because you know one of the biggest things that we'd like to be involved in is sharing information between councils to avoid people repeating the same experiments and kind of wasting money and, and time doing that all right so um we went with uh, Wellington's uh, trial survey um, uh, we trialed our our idea with Wellington City Council we uh, we took the CO2 reduction target, um, which was set out in the 2007 Climate Change Action Plan and is repeated in the 2010 plan. And uh, we, we sat down and we went through it uh, with uh, Zach Rizal, who's the uh, appropriate man at the council. And um, you know, it, it was very complicated. And it turns out that for a target like that, every single enabling factor that we thought might be involved was involved. And, um, 
it took us about 15, oh God, no, it was, it was closer to 20 minutes to, uh, to go through all the different ways that these different factors, community, stakeholders, what have you, were involved in setting that target. And um, of course, with a large number of different uh, renewable energy related projects, it's going to be uh, quite a big job to actually try to take that. Um, so we're going to have to become a little bit more focused and efficient in how we ask our questions. Um, the other thing that uh, we discovered was that people are really not keen to talk about the, the negative side of things, the, the problems they had to overcome, the you know, the councillor who doesn't believe in climate change, uh, whatever, and that, that's probably to be expected. Uh, now we're kind of reconsidering whether we want to even address the negative side of things. Um, it's, it's just probably politically unwise for people to talk about it. Probably not that helpful anyway. So. Um, we will focus on the positive uh, in the future, I think. Um, okay. Yeah. The other thing was that these ideas of enabling and disabling factors are uh, we had to explain them. You know, they're maybe not universally understood. So we, we're going to work on the language as well. Yeah. And timeliness. People forget why things happen. Things are things are bloody. Um, yeah. Speaking of timeliness, um, uh, complicated. People move on. There's a lot of movement in councils. No one knows why things happen a few years down the track. So you, if you want to capture this information, you have to you have to act quickly. And um, just to conclude, um, there are some really positive signs of change at the local government level. Um, these have to be documented. Um, we want to understand why they're happening. Uh, otherwise, we'll just uh, repeat effort, and it's it's really unhelpful and un unnecessary. And um, the New Zealand Centre for Sustainable Cities is really happy to contribute to the process. Yo.